Oh, gee, wow, a pizza party before more threats of nuclear war. How, how very presidential. Yes, the clowns are running the asylum that we are calling a country. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Lukodowski here of wearechange.org. And there is so much crazy news that we hope to get into all of it in this particular video. As the president of the United States has just made some jarring statements on the world stage that many in the White House and Secretary of State office are trying to walk back immediately as of course it was a dangerous escalation in a corrupted country where his son actually did secure millions of dollars for contracts dealing with deadly pathogen research just when you thought the situation couldn't get any more wild any more salacious any more crazy here we are today we're going to be getting into all of that plus a lot more but before we do we have to remind you that a lot of states a lot of countries usually take away the driver's license from someone in the age and cognitive abilities of the current president of the united states but he is running a country well at least perceived to be since of course we do know a lot of billionaires and special interests do essentially call the shots especially when it comes to implementing american policy passing laws rules regulations as many scientific studies have now proven that we are living under a special form of government that represents the billionaire class which of course our system caters to and many times ignores populist publicly supported causes that of course never get heard now one of the individuals that has used and abused this system for his own personal gain that has allowed him to become one of the world's richest people is of course bill gates that just came out and said that quote rich nations should move to a hundred percent synthetic beef yes fake meat soy which of course bill gates is in the industry of as he is also becoming the u.s largest farmland owner where of course he is conducting a business creating fake meat he's also the biggest proponent and pusher of gmos he was a huge backer and supporter of monsanto that of course is dealing with huge lawsuits when it deals with glyphosate and what many courts are seeing as a deliberate release of cancer causing chemicals that has destroyed the lives of many individuals and when you start looking into the particular studies of the of the benefit especially when it comes to meat when you see the the health results of, of a lot of people who focus on a purely meat diet there does seem to be a correlation with a big establishment push trying to make you unhealthy and if i could personally create my own headline for this specific story it would be that bill gates wants you to be a good passive agreeable beta soy boy so he could conquer you easily but that's just me being a little sensationalistic now bill gates is also in the news as of course we're hearing that his 43 million dollar bachelor pad his san diego beachfront home which he says will be underwater by 2050 is quote becoming a nuisance for local officials as they're complaining about the huge amounts of construction since of course bill gates is customizing it for his own personal liking i wonder i wonder if he's going to give it maybe a a little saint james island kind of vibe this says of course the wall street journal is reporting that jeffrey epstein's private island in the caribbean is going for sale for 125 million dollars jeffrey epstein was of course very close friends with bill gates to the extent that bill gates's wife divorced him for it since of course this man was also a monster and protected by the fbi and other local and federal police departments for over 30 years as he committed some of the worst atrocities you could even possibly imagine on the face of this earth now whoever does decide to buy this island understand the island probably has a lot of really bad juju and probably really bad satanic energy but yet again that's just my own personal per perspective on it and other crazy billionaire news elon musk has gone on twitter and has publicly floated the idea of either buying twitter or creating his own platform that would compete with it as of course he launched a poll asking people whether twitter adheres to the principles of free speech which according to elon musk is essential to a functioning democracy and overwhelmingly the majority of people said no it definitely doesn't stand for that because it doesn't it censors political speech allows political violence on one side when it benefits them and routinely targets journalists whistleblowers for of course exposing special interest and big money that's usually offended by journalism or jokes now elon musk even publicly asked saying specifically quote given that twitter serves as the de facto public town square failing to adhere to free speech principles fundamentally undermines democracy 
what should be done. A lot of people told Elon Musk to buy Twitter. Some people have recommended that he should create a new version of the platform, which he responded to by saying, quote, am giving serious thought to this. Now, of course, as you know, we've been kind of very critical of Elon Musk on this broadcast. Would he provide a net benefit with the free speech platform? Do we even need a free speech platform? Well, of course, time will tell what he will do. But of course, desperately, I would say that there is a need for an ability to be able to speak freely, de-radicalize individuals, have honest conversations, seeking the truth, which you could only do by having, of course, the ability to say and express yourself however you want without being afraid of being punished for it. This is why we started LukeUncensored.com and even launched a t-shirt store making fun of big tech social media as we just released our Schmeagol Psychologically Social Media Brainwashed Edition that, of course, replaces the ring of power with uh, Instagram. I really like this t-shirt, especially in white. I'm personally getting it. If you want yours, you can on, of course, the best politicalshirts.com that is our website and of course absolutely supports this independent media broadcast and with speech becoming more limited more contrived more controlled with people having the fear of being canceled having their entire accounts destroyed for expressing an opinion you could of course also wear a t-shirt and express some very interesting some would say hyperbolic political commentary to the rest of the world without fear of any of that you might get kicked out of a, a, a store though some of the shirts we have here we can't even show you here on this platform but they are very thought-provoking very interesting shirts that of course are there to help start the conversation, spread a message, and let people know that they are not alone. This is a way of doing activism, lazy activism. It's a way of making new friends. It's a way of realizing who's paying attention to what's really going on and what's not just by simply wearing a t-shirt. The one I'm wearing right now is also available on our store and it gets a crap ton of comments, especially here in beautiful Florida, where of course I'm spending my time here in Miami. So if you're looking for good icebreakers, look no further than thebestpoliticalshirts.com. Just scroll through there. I'll bet you'll find something very interesting that of course piques your interest and helps you start the conversation today and allows you to be a part of helping wake people up. Now, in the last video that we did on this channel, we specifically talked about a potential internal conflict that's happening between the White House and the Pentagon when it comes to escalating and trying to de-escalate the conflict, which it looks like the Pentagon is doing in some ways. This conflict, of course, could now be even highlighted even more, especially from the very sensationalistic and hyperbolic comments from the President of the United States that went to Europe and openly demanded regime change in Russia, specifically saying that Putin, quote, cannot remain in power. A fiery, very aggressive speech that, of course, escalates the very dangerous situation that the United States is in, specifically with Russia, a nuclear weapon threatening country. A lot of people are commentating that Biden during this speech wandered off script since, of course, minutes after speaking, the White House literally issued a statement saying that Biden's comments were not to be taken as policy. The U.S. Secretary of State, Blinken, literally had to walk back Biden's statements, which supposedly were unscripted, as he is now trying to reassure the world that there is no strategy of regime change in Russia or, quote, anywhere else. And you really have to start asking yourself, was this a blunder because of cognitive decline in old age? Or, or was this a deliberate escalation made by the President of the United States that has been especially hyperbolic and egregious when it comes to his foreign policy? Now, of course, Russia sees this comment as a threat. The President of the United States has even called Putin a, quote, butcher and murderer. And whether you believe these statements to be true or not, but these overly emotional statements do not help our current foreign policy and diplomacy efforts. They are at best uncalculated, unrestrained, especially with the larger implications still at play here. As, of course, Glenn Greenwald wrote in his Substack in a very interesting article that is definitely worth a read that's titled, quote, 
Biden's reckless words underscores the dangers of the U.S. use of Ukraine as a proxy war. Now, if you remember for a very long time, we told you that there's a big possibility that there's going to be a limited proxy war with Ukraine, just like we saw in Syria, that will go on for a very long time. And I think we're looking at the same exact situation, but this situation is a lot more serious, as, of course, a lot hangs in the balance of them. There's also, of course, clear incidences of outright corruption in Ukraine that the president's son, Hunter Biden, participated in, as, of course, he had a major contract from a nationalized Ukrainian company, Burisma, that paid him an extraordinary amount amount of money for his quote services this a former crackhead that was getting the money and now also according to many news organizations like the daily mail and the new york post was the one brokering the deals that secured millions of dollars of funding for U.S. contractors in Ukraine to work on bio laboratories researching, quote, deadly pathogens. This is according to the laptop emails that were revealed that, of course, the corporate media told you never existed in the first place. Now, of course, the New York Times and other media organizations are admitting that they were wrong and they're saying that the Hunter Biden laptop did exist. But according to them, right before the election, it just didn't. But now it does. How very convenient of them. It's also important to know that there has been a full-on PR campaign barrage denying the existence of bio labs inside of Ukraine. This, of course, until the Undersecretary of State came out and said, yes, they're there and they're actually in danger of being confiscated by Russia, who now could have deadly pathogens of what we've been researching specifically when it comes to anthrax and other deadly bioweapons in that specific region. Now, now you have to ask yourself, why are we doing dangerous biological research in Ukraine? Well, of course, you don't want to do it here in the United States. It would risk the population around us. Ukraine, a corrupted government, a place where you could easily buy off politicians, you could easily place a bioweapons, endanger their people, doing dangerous gain-of-function research on insane pathogens. And as long as Yuri from the local town is getting his cut from the U.S. government from Hunter Biden, well, of course, you have nothing to worry about, right? Yeah, again absolutely incredulous stupid move and they used ukraine because it's a poor country it's a corrupted country and it's a country that they wanted them to have the risk of doing this even though they're in a position which i've been talking about since 2014 is a position where a potential conflict could be starting it has that's not where you want to put your bio lab facilities especially with bombs dropping all over the place armies invading bullets everywhere it's absolutely ridiculous and now according to the daily mail Hunter Biden did help to broker these deals, which makes you wonder what in the world is going on here, as of course Biden is giving Ukraine billions of dollars. There's clear corruption links with his specific son. What's the official policy? What's really going on here? Why is Biden breaking script here, trying to push for more conflict? As Zelensky is asking for a no-fly zone, asking for tanks, planes, missiles from the United States, from NATO? Holy freaking crap. That's a question that a lot of people should be asking. But of course, the corporate media is not asking. They, they usually literally act like the PR representatives of those in power, as NPR has labeled this story as a, quote, example of far-right conspiracy theory, Russian propaganda that is, quote, spread more effectively than Russia itself. Yes, that's literally, that's literally NPR's take on it. Daily Mail is reporting that they have the receipts, that they have the documents, that they have the emails proving that Joe Biden was the conduit to help provide this type of research and facility that, of course, even the U.S. government admits was there. This is a bombshell story. Everyone should be talking about this. A lot of implications here, a lot of corruption here, a lot of things at stake here. And when you ask yourself, why can't we have nice things in this world? It's, it's usually because of nepotism and corruption. And now we have a clear cut case of both. As of course, it didn't have to be this way. This conflict could have been presented, but now we're paying the ultimate price for it. As of course, even the president of the United States is warning about global food shortages. This is something that I've been warning you about for the last two years on this independent media broadcast but now specifically he's saying because of the conflict in ukraine there's going to be some major problems on the world stage and and, and absolutely ukraine is a major producer of wheat russia is a major producer of fertilizer all of those supply chain 
have been dealing with significant shortages, significant disruptions. There's major sanctions. And uh, of course, Biden is saying that food shortages for Americans are, quote, going to be real. Now, if you take any anything from this is that the corporate media lies. They're not telling the truth. They do the bidding of the special interest. Independent media and a free, open, honest conversation is where it's at. It's where we need to understand things in order to deal with them, in order to fix them. There's a lot of problems in our current system right now, and there's no way of fixing them if you can't even have a conversation, if you can't even be honest about them. And I think it's clear what's happening inside of the White House is tumultuous. It's destructive. It's not working in the benefit of you, me, or anyone else in the general republic it's working in the benefit of the military industrial complex it's working for the benefit of the warmongers and of course the people who are paying the price are you me and of course ultimately the people of ukraine that are being screwed over here used as a proxy war for of course the larger insane egotistical bull crap from absolutely old men that have no discretion or respect for humanity i don't care whose side you're on this is idiotic this is stupid it, all of this is absolutely pointless and is going to get a lot worse before it gets any better if if you've been on lukeuncensored.com hopefully you have listened to the months and months of serious warnings that i've been giving you specifically telling you to prepare for this if you haven't it's not too late to prepare but uh it's not going to be as easy as it was before and again a lot of this is just my own perspective when i when i tell you my perspective i try to make that clear when it comes to of course talking about the news if you thought i did a good job describing what i personally think and, and what's out there share this video with your friends and family members it's not easy there's a lot of disinformation there's a lot of propaganda there's a lot of things that i might even get wrong here and if i have please let me know about it no one is perfect we're doing our best here especially during these crazy tumultuous times to try to report and document as best as we can so you fully understand the situation without any bull crap i love you guys i want to be here i did a video specifically about the larger conflict between the pentagon and the white house which you can watch here definitely worth a watch to get an understanding of the larger conflict unfolding here i wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you and this is why i love you guys stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org 